It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Support for this podcast comes from Invent Together. I bet you didn't know that inventing activity by black inventors peaked in 1899, and it has never recovered. Black and Hispanic college graduates patent at half the rate of white college graduates. That's just one of the reasons why you need to know about Invent Together. When our patent system gets more diverse, our nation will get stronger and more successful. Find out how you can help diverse inventors and unleash economic opportunity at inventtogether.org. Rams Nation, what's happening? What's good? It's your boy Bear Motter from Rams Podcast, but this is Locked On Rams. It's Victory Tuesday. Yes, it's usually Victory Monday, but we played on Monday night. We won. I brought on the only person I knew that could break this down with me the best that he can. That's the man, the myth, the legend, James Kroger. James, we're going to jump right into it. How are you doing, bud? Whew, I'm doing a lot better now than I was doing in the first half, Bear. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. We've been texting each other all day about this game. I was pacing around during the first Monday Night Football game because I was so anxious for this game. But, uh, yeah, dude, glad to be here, and I'm happy with the final score of this Rams game. Awesome, man. Yeah, we'll get to, the, we'll get to breaking down the game, talking about uh, where, we're, where our heads were at at halftime, how we you know, regrouped, how the coaches really regrouped and re-game planned at halftime. Came out with a better plan of attack versus Raiders offense and defense. Before we get to that, guys, make sure to go hit the subscribe button. iTunes, Spotify, we're everywhere. Join our Facebook group. Follow on Twitter, at Rams Podcast, at LA underscore Rambling Bear, at Lockdown Rams, at J Kroger 3 all that good stuff. I'm so excited. I just want to get all that stuff out of the way. You know where to find us. Give us a holler. Give us a shout. But let's get into this game, James, because you talked about it right out of the gate. Halftime, if you asked us how we did, and you actually came up. We were talking on the phone, and you're like, you know what? We should maybe just record our thoughts and feelings at halftime and then reflect <laughs> on them after the game because me and you were a little stressed out. We were kind of calming each other down. Uh, the offense, we, you know, we expected it to start slow, and it did. Uh, came out, couldn't really move the football, but we had the ball for eight minutes in the first half. We had 10 points off of those eight minutes, so we were productive when we had the ball. Greg Zerline missed a field goal to the right. It was a like a 48-yarder or something like that, so uh, nothing too crazy. But our, our offense went out there was productive. Nothing exciting, nothing explosive. The Raiders took control of the ball, did what they were supposed to do. Walk me through that first half and really how we had how we had to keep ourselves from jumping off the ledge there well dude honestly i was freaking out a little bit at halftime just because of the score and everything that was going on we didn't really seem like we're gonna be that high scoring offense that we were expecting immediately and then also our defense that we've been bragging about this whole offseason all the additions we have we got sue in there we got ad back we got brockers on the line with coming at it with high energy we weren't seeing much coming out of that defense either. We were getting a little torn apart. I think John Gruden made a smart move and basically attacked our middlemen, our linebackers. He was going up the middle a lot, uh, getting away with a lot of a lot of yards and, and completions there. And it was a little frustrating. You know, Carr was getting the ball off quickly and doing the perfect offense that you would expect against a defense like ours, trying not to go for anything too deep, not too many runs. He was just dumping the ball off uh, with, with those short passes, and they were being successful. And it was a little bit stressful to, to see these guys get stomped on initially defensively. And offensively, you're right. You know, we didn't start off strong. I think we got to remember this was really the first – offensive drive of the season since last year we'd had, right. we had no preseason plays for our first team offense so you know that first drive really didn't bug me too much but obviously we came back and we had a lot of success later on uh, offensively so the thing is we just didn't get the ball enough offensively yeah they definitely dominated the ball in the beginning in that first half and you talked about Gruden's plan he was executing it to perfection it was basically keep the mm -hmm. ball out of the Rams offense 
pound the ball up the middle, work those across routes. I think it was Cooks, their tight end, ended up having nine catches for 180-something yards, just something ridiculous, right? He had an amazing game. And then, as we talked about, the Rams went at halftime, adjusted, came out, changed a couple things, gave Todd Gurley the rock, finally. Um, Again, we said we didn't have the ball much. Well, we like going down the field, and I love seeing Jared Goff, you know, just let it go. And we're going to start connecting on those. There were a couple deep balls that just missed out of the reach. Brandon Cooks had two where he came back for it and we got pass interference. That was probably our best offense early on was uh, Raiders penalties. Uh, We talked a lot about it last year for the Rams being a big problem. But uh, the Raiders, it was was definitely one of their big downfalls. They had 11 penalties for 155 yards. Uh, Rams, although, didn't come out super clean. We had 8 for 70, a couple timely penalties as well. But... Uh, the three turnovers that the Rams had were huge. The one in the first half that John Johnson had in that corner of the end zone, they were going to cook again. They just kept feeding it, and they just went to the well one too many times. And you actually just tweeted out from Rams podcast, like, we got to do something about this cook matchup because they're taking advantage of it. And that was it. John Johnson went over there and made a big play that we needed, kept this thing mm-hmm. close at halftime. The Raiders did get a field goal right before half to go up 13-10 going into halftime. But you know, looking at the way it was played with the possession and the stats that happened in the first half, you know, we were lucky that it was that was that close. So coming out uh, in the second half, they really made adjustments. They really did. And in the third quarter, I'm not sure if you noticed, but they put Talib on 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 Cook uh, immediately coming out of of halftime. So that was a major adjustment that I saw. I did tweet that we needed to figure something out with Cook even though John Johnson had intercepted him right before halftime there. But, yeah, they, they made an adjustment. Obviously, Wade Phillips was feeling the same thing and, and did something about that. I want to also get your thoughts on this defensive line, dude, because, you know, I think we need to kind of get into the nitty-gritty here and talk about who was really performing. Mr. Aaron Donald really only had one solo tackle this whole game and somebody like Brockers had five total tackles and one sack um were you disappointed with this defensive line in this game at all not so much disappointed but I was just like kept waiting for it to explode right kept waiting for the Mm -hmm. you know crazy amount of pressures and we do have to give Derek Carr a lot of credit for getting the ball out fast right they were talking about it on the broadcast 2.2 seconds that they got it out on average so we couldn't really get to him when we were getting to him uh the one time donald made a big play and then they ended up calling roughing the passer he came in low uh, questionable call i saw rams twitter freak out over it but we're gonna get a lot of, <laughs> I, I assume we're gonna get a lot of those we've got donald and sue two guys that are extremely aggressive around the quarterback and if you watch this first week of nfl football they're being very cautious with the quarterback even more than they were in the past so uh, not really surprised by the penalty, but yeah, it was kind of a crap penalty. But you're right, it's go- we're going to have guys like Brockers and Easley and some of these linebackers coming off the edge should have big games, right? Because you're thinking so much attention is going to go to Sue and Donald. And we talked about this a little bit over text, but I was watching the highlight package they put together of like, where is Aaron Donald? Like three of the four plays they showed her, he's just getting held right across the face. He's not going to get a lot of those calls. He's got to find a way to get through. But I expect this D-line to really come into their own. Donald's really only been playing with Sue for, what, eight days now? So it's going to take some time. We saw him come in last year. He missed opening games. So we're already one game ahead of having Aaron Donald than we were last year. And he won Defense Player of the Year. So I, I'm little, little, little concern. But I think they're going to rev up and just be crazy nasty. Because that was one of the comments I heard after the game was, man, think about how the Rams ended up pulling away and really making adjustments. And we didn't hear Aaron Donald's name a lot. That's not going to be happening <laughs> the whole season. So when he starts to cut it loose, man, look out. Right, look out for him. But at the same time, this game, he, you were right, he was still revving up, and hopefully we'll we'll be able to see him get a lot more, and especially with the combination of Sue. Sacks, I was ask, I was looking at our Facebook group. I asked for predictions on sacks and interceptions, and we didn't really get close to a lot of people's predictions there. So, uh, yeah, hopefully he, he gets up to speed. You know, one thing I, I wanted to ask you, too, is speaking of the way Gruden approached this defense – do you see our linebacker situation as kind of an Achilles heel? If you're a, a team facing the Rams in the next couple of weeks, when you sort of have the same sort of attack against our defense, because 
essentially what adjustments can we possibly make to uh, prevent those kind of um, successful yards happening? Yeah, it's going to be something that Wade Phillips is going to have to adjust to. I think, obviously, it's not the end of the world. We don't have the worst linebackers in the world. Corey Littleton ended up having himself a great game. I know there was a lot of talk about him as far as you know allowing some of those passes to cook early. But I think he ended up having a great game. He ended up having an interception that was huge for us, too, even though Carr was, I mean, it was basically a throwaway in a sense. But he made the play. And we're going to get Mark Barron back soon. So we're going to add a, a leadership piece to that core, which I think is going to help a lot. And then these guys are getting valuable time in the game. Monday Night Football against the Raiders. Only going to get better. Our coaches, we saw it from the halftime adjustment. They're going to be able to work with these guys. They're going to be able to make adjustments from game to game. They did it from half to half. We ended up dominating that second half. We had 20 minutes to their 10 minutes. Jared Goff, as we're kind of talking about the change between one half and another, in the first half on play action, he was 1 for 2 with 20 yards. In the second half, using the play action, he was 7 of 14, 107 mm -hmm. yards and a touchdown. Uh, so those differences that came out of halftime, I think, is really a credit to them kind of working on the fly and making adjustments. No one's seen what Chucky and this offense was going to bring, so everything was kind of new as they were going. They made adjustments during the game. Yeah, they got to sure up that middle of the field, but a lot of great stuff to take away. Before we take a break, I want to talk to you about mybookie.ag. Guys, screw the Lions first off. That's what I'm going to say. Ne never do a double bet on Monday night, and I'll tell you why. I put some money down, did a little parlay. I love mybookie.ag. You guys know that. We talk about betting a lot here. We're going to do a crossover section later in the week talking about it. But go check them out, mybookie.ag. Use the promo code Locked On to get your deposit matched right away. Get that bonus money and go check it out. It's the best site possible for betting, in-game live betting. There's also super fast payouts. If you want your money back and you got a big win, expect that money in a couple days. I love their site. It's really easy to use. It's easy to use on mobile. Again, locked on is the promo code. You're going to get your deposit matched right away. So go check it out. Tell Bear sent you. We'll get some picks. I actually need to start reaching out to you guys for some pick advice because I struggled this last weekend. And the stinking Lions getting blown out. I took them plus the points. That was that was a sad, sad affair. But the Rams covered. Did great. James, you were actually pretty close on that prediction. We're going to talk about that and more about the offense on the other side of the break. We'll be right back with more from James Kroger. All right, Rams Nation, we are back. We've got James Kroger from Rams Podcast. Guys, don't forget, we are going to be jumping on together to do a full version of Rams Podcast, full hour, talking this game, breaking it down, talking about the opponent coming up, just having a bunch of fun, cracking some beers and letting loose. So make sure to be on a lookout for Rams podcast dropping later this week. But until then, you get the man, the myth, the legend himself. I think I feel like I get a dollar every time I call you the man, the myth, the legend. You got to start paying me over here. Uh, but James, he's back with us. We're going to talk the offense now. We talked up the defense. We're going to get into some game balls a little bit later in the show. Who's trending up, who's trending down. But let's focus some time on the offense. We've got dynamic wide receivers. There was, there was so much hype coming in. Brandon Cook's first appearance as a Ram. Robert Woods coming off that big year. Cooper Cup coming into his second year. Farrell Cooper trying to make a way as a wide receiver. He got a little banged up. What was your overall impression of the offense, and where can it go from here? Well, the offense, you know, this definitely was a, a tale of two halves, Bear, because we saw a lot of adjustments offensively going into the second half that I really liked. We saw in the first half, you know, we started with some jet sweeps. We did about three or four of them immediately, and they were, you know, they were okay. We saw uh, Cup get one of them and, and Cooks get one of them. But we opened it up. We did some play action in the third quarter, which was successful with Todd Gurley. And, you know, one thing that really bugged me, speaking of the, some of the receivers, was, man, Robert Woods and Jared Goff's chemistry. They just weren't able to connect as much as Jared Goff was trying to make it happen. He was a little bit inaccurate with him. 
Woods only had three receptions for 37 yards, but he had nine targets. He was actually tied with Cooper Cup for targets, but Cooper Cup, of course, had 52 yards and five receptions, averaging about 10. But back to Robert Woods, there was just some of those plays were down the field. I think one of them was could have been for a touchdown that they were so close, and you could tell that the chemistry and accuracy wasn't quite there. I don't know if it was because we're on the uh, – the whole country was watching. We're on Monday Night Football. Of course, they're – first game back they didn't play anything in the preseason but that was just lacking a bit he was able to connect a little bit more frequently with uh, cooks of course five receptions and eight total targets but yeah man that was one thing i i I was a little disappointed with i was happy with cooper cup uh, speaking of tied for most most targets he had uh five receptions and one thing that really stuck out about cooper cup is three of those five receptions were for third down conversions and of course Mm. he did have that touchdown so cooper cup was super impressive tonight i snagged him up on my fantasy team this year he's my my extra variable on the on the offense and i'm glad i did i think he ended up with close to 19 points or so so that's not too bad for for a, a late round pick but uh yeah, yeah offensively dude it was you know we started out the first half pretty slow but was really happy what i saw in the second half and and jared goff just remaining calm back there uh offensively and he did have a lot of time back there but he remained calm and confident and made it happen dude got a few things to work on though Nice. I think that's the first time I've heard the flex position referred to as an extra variable on the offensive <laughs> side. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. I was like, man, he is in full stat geek mode right now. He's like, it's my extra yeah. variable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, great pickup, man. And Cup did everything you needed that game to get some points for you. At the touchdown definitely helped. Uh, I understand your frustration with Woods, but I'm going to sit here and I'm going to pump your brakes a little bit on it. And I'm going to tell you why. They weren't terribly far off from being right on point, right? You talked about it. He overthrew him a couple times, especially on the deep ball. But I loved it, especially the second deep ball. The first couple deep throws from Jared Goff were to Brandon Cooks, and they were a little bit underthrown. And when I said, when we talked at halftime, I said, man, I want to see Goff just let it go and see the guy run underneath it and make one of those amazing plays, right? And he started doing that in the second half. Started really letting it go, and it was to Robert Woods. And you're right, they were off, but they're not terribly off. It's not like where I felt like Sammy Watkins and Jared Goff were off last year. Remember that how that true, chemistry true. was kind of struggled at the beginning mm-hmm. and never really found its way. I feel like this one is still really close from being connected. We talked about them not playing in the preseason. You know, McVay talked about how he built these practices to get him ready. And, you know, yeah, okay, right? But they got to get out there and play. And I think this is shaking off a lot of the the rust. We saw that in the first half with how slow they were. Uh, They went to the air a lot. You know, Gurley, at one point in the second half, was the third leading rusher on our team behind two wide receivers. You talked about it. And if you look at some of the carries, Cup had two carries, Woods had a carry, and Brandon Cooks had a carry. I liked it. I liked the jet sweep. You got to run that, keep people honest there. But... The offense had to get in the flow. Keep people honest. Yeah, you got to keep that deep. They always talked about, you know, what are you going to do with Tavon Austin gone, your little trick guy? Well, we've got three other wide receivers that obviously we can plug and play there right. to do that jet sweep. And one of the things that used to drive us nuts about that jet sweep in the last couple of years is it was like fake, 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 jet sweep, fake, fake, fake. And so finally, here we are. Yeah. We run it three or four times. And it allows us over the next couple of games to start setting up that fake because now they're going, oh, crap, they're, they're going to hand this off potentially. So love that about it. Jared Goff, we talked about his uh, just being comfortable back there. He had a lot of time at points, but receivers just couldn't get open. But he didn't have happy feet. He was just sitting back there, nice, calm, cool, collected, uh, checking out the field. He did have a, a handful of dangerous throws that we talked about where he was really trying to put it in there, these tight windows in the NFL. But he can make that throw. I think they're all going to kind of continue to gel. And I wouldn't worry about Robert Woods and Jared Goff coming together because, again, the one thing he talked about was his targets. He got nine targets. So he loves going to Robert Woods. He's not going to stop. They're only going to kind of continue to get better there. Uh, but looking at the targets down the board, man, everyone got their fair shake at getting some catches and yards. Brandon Cooks, eight targets. Cup had nine Todd Gurley had five. We love seeing him come out of the backfield. They, it took him almost a full half to run a screen to him, which was huge for us last year. They ended up running it twice in a row, which I love because it's like me playing Madden where you're like, ha-ha, stop the screen. I'm like, ha-ha, I'm going to freaking run it again, and I'm going to get my first down. So I love McVay still doing what 
McVay does, and it's like this video game style of calling a, a offense. And then he was aggressive near the end, something I love to see. Uh, we're up by 10 points. It was like a second down. The clock's running. You think, okay, just hand it off. He does a play action, goes down the field 15 yards. It was an incomplete pass, but I like the aggression of being like, I'm not going to just play the game mm-hmm. the way that you expect it to be played or that you know other coaches do. I'm going to keep you on your toes. I'm going to stay aggressive, and I'm going to try to put this game away because that's what they did. They had that long, uh, it was like 10-play drive at the end of the fourth quarter where they came down. They ended up getting a field goal, and I was bummed at that point because I wanted them to score a touchdown and get 30 points and hit that average they got last year. And then there goes your boy, Marcus Peters, with the pick six to break over that threshold, 33 points, three above our average from last year, off to a great start defending that number one offense. I loved it. And you're on the board, my friend, with our bet with the Seahawkers. Marcus Peters, interception. You're on the board. You're on your way to a jersey. That's right, dude. I'm so jacked about Marcus Peters. I'm so happy he got this interception this week. This guy, he's he's so fun to watch uh, defensively. He's he's a ball hawk. He'll play off the defender quite a bit to get to the ball and make that interception happen. And when he got it, he ran it back for a pick six. I was just so jacked, man. And I, yep, you're right. I got to tease the, Seah- the Seahawkers podcast tomorrow on Twitter uh, because I'm up one. And I don't see, I don't know, man. I think this is going to be quite the, quite the runaway for both of our bets. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, we're both at one. Rams are 1-0 and and sitting pretty in first place in the division. Again, flashing back to our halftime talk, and I said, dude, if, if we lose this game, I'm not prepared mentally to do podcasts <laughs> losing this game. Like I've been so confident coming this far that the thought of a loss at halftime was like just crushing my brain. I had to like do some quick yoga. I had to you know meditate. Like my main man, James Kroger, and just breathe it out a little bit and go, all right, good thoughts, good thoughts. We came back. We adjusted. But, yeah, it was crazy at halftime thinking, wait, what's going on here? And will this last another half? But the Rams did what uh, they did a lot last year, which was a great second-half team. They came out. They scored points in the third and fourth quarter, and they shut out the Raiders, which was another huge thing. The defense stepped it up. You talked about Marcus Peters. He almost had one before half where he made a risky play on something and, and it ended up being a completion for them, set him up for a field goal. But uh, I love the way that he plays the ball like that, and he's going to continue to be risky out there. You're right. I think me and you are looking pretty for our bets. Excited to kind of follow that throughout the season. And it's always fun messing with Seahawk fans. They are just, you know, they're easy to rile up, especially when they're 0-1. <laughs> They are. Uh, so, yeah, I, you know, I really doubt you did either of those things, meditate or do yoga, but it's nice to, <laughs> nice to picture, get that mental picture going on in my mind. Guilty. Isn't it weird that we we won by 20 and the score was exactly pretty much what I have to say I predicted All on right, your Instagram there it is. on Lockdown Rams. There it is. Here it is. I'm, I'm going there. I said 35-14. I was pretty dang close, okay? Good. Isn't it funny that we won by 20 and there's still this sense of like, well, it was we barely got through there. Yeah. Yeah. It was okay. Yeah, it, it was, was stressful. Like... Yeah, it was a stressful first half, and you're right. You, we win by 20, and here we are going, whew, and, and we're so relieved because there was so much hype, man. We had to win this first game, and we did, and we did it going away, and I love that. You know, 23 points in the second half, shut down their offense, defense makes plays. Yes, we got some areas to grow in, uh, but a big win for the guys. We get to come home, face the Cardinals, and look to go 2-0. Right out of the gate. James, we're going to take one more quick commercial break. We're going to be back with game balls. And we're going to bring an old one back. We used to do the play action ball. You get the ball? No, you don't. It's a, it's kind of our reverse game ball. We're going to do that coming up after the break with James Kroger. All right, Rams Nation, we are back. Third and final segment, Tuesday edition, Victory Tuesday edition. I'll get used to that. I'll get used to really victory combined with any day uh, of the week for the Rams. So pretty stoked about that. We're 1-0. and We've mentioned it a handful of times, but we're sitting on top of the NFC West looking down on a bunch of suckers. Jimmy Garoppolo looked poor in their loss. Russell Wilson struggled on the road. 
Uh, they've got some banged up injuries to some big time players over there. We're going to talk about that a lot more in the week. And then the Arizona Cardinals got spanked at home by a, like a 50 year old running back named Adrian Peterson, who James has also on the roster getting some points. Nicely That's right. done. James with the win. Fantasy sleeper win. Sleeper king. Sleeper king. <laughs> sleeper king. Hashtag sleeper king. <laughs> uh, I love it. James, we're going to bring this one back. We used to do this on Rams podcast. Obviously, the game ball is something that a lot of teams and coaches and players do after the game. So we're going to give away. I'll, we'll do an offense, defensive player game ball. And then our reverse side of that is the play action ball, right? It's, it's, the, it's the negative side of a game ball. Maybe it doesn't have to be harsh and we hate these guys, but something where it says they got to step it up because they definitely didn't earn a game ball this game. And if they play like that, they're never going to get one. So I'll let you kick it off. Give me uh, two game balls and then maybe one play action ball. Whew, a lot of awards to give out here. Okay. Let's start on the offensive side of the ball. I think you already know I talked about this guy. One of my favorite <laughs> players is getting the game ball, Mr. Cooper Cup, hey. with his five receptions, two carries for 16 yards, five receptions, 52 yards, one touchdown. He scared me in the beginning. His first catch of the game or his first attempt of the game hit him right in the hands, even though it was a bad throw by Jared Goff. But I was sitting there thinking, is is Butterfingers back? Is he, you know, is this some sort of sick joke that he's he's just gonna, you know, <laughs> consistently drop some of these important balls? But the very next play, he caught one for 12 yards, which was his longest, uh, and for a first down. So Cooper Cup is back. He's gonna be big this season. He's gonna be big for my fantasy league. He gets my game ball. And on the defensive side of the ball, <clears throat> dude, I gotta go with Michael Brockers, man. He was so I, – nice. I felt the most energy coming from him to start the game. I felt tons of energy coming from Oakland, the black hole, whatever they call those crazy weirdos in Oakland. <laughs> uh, but uh, they had tons of energy. The stadium was loud. They they came off the ball and scored immediately on us. But on the def and our on our defense, Michael Brockers he got a penalty on second play of the game because he jumped the ball. He was so he was so jacked. Ended up with four taco tackles and one sack. This dude brought it, man. And you look to your left and right, and you got Dominican Sue and Aaron Donald next to you, and you're getting a game ball from James Kroger. Hey. Uh, you played a pretty good game. And uh, so that's who I'm giving it to defensively. Hopefully, I, I didn't take your guy. And then what's what's my other one here? Oh, my my fake out. Yeah, your I, play action ball. Actually, oh man, I don't I don't want to piss anybody off. You say but, it. Uh, you say what you feel. <laughs> oh boy, um, you know Aaron Donald had one tackle this whole Ooh, game. He's going there. Know. He's cashing that check uh, in. Uh, so just looking at your uh, pay, just looking at the pay stops here, <laughs> Michael Brockman killed it today. Donald, I'm sorry. I know he's getting double teamed and getting stacked on. I just, uh, I was so anxious, especially after his contract and him coming back. Really wanted to see what Donald was gonna do. I, I wanted to see a sack from him. So. Well, I gotta do it. I'm sorry, hey, guys. No, my I, Twitter is at Ellie underscore there. <laughs> if, if you don't, if you don't like it, lies, lies. You know what's funny though? I'm glad you said it. That's why we're here, man. We gotta kick the truth. You wanted more from the man. We hashtag paid the man. You wanted to hashtag see a sack, and he almost got one. He got one taken away by uh, roughing the passer, which we talked is gonna happen a lot this year for this group and many people in the NFL. Uh, but you're right. Hey, you're fair to say it. And it's funny because your defensive game ball probably is one of the guys that, you know, got the most value from him maybe struggling. Uh, I can't wait to get some of the pro football focus numbers tomorrow. I get my hands on all those goodies that they send to me and the locked on crew. So we'll break it down. You know, I want to see some of those key stats as far as quarterback pressures and what else he did in the game that really didn't show up on the stat sheet. But hey, you're, you're, you're a fan. You're a paying customer. And you wanted more. I get it. Good first play action ball, though. You, I didn't. We would have never thought that the first, uh, you know, negative ball would go to Aaron Donald. And you know, I didn't it, think we'd be losing at halftime. <laughs> there you go. A couple <laughs> things. A couple things I want to drop that I loved. You, you picked Cooper Cup. You mentioned it earlier, but three of his catches ended up being for first downs. A couple of those came in the fourth quarter when we really need to keep that clock moving and, and keep the ball on our side. So love that. Great pick for Cooper Cup over there. It really wasn't a shocker, but, uh, you know, good pick. Can't go wrong. Got you a touchdown, too, on your fantasy. You got to love it. I'm going to go probably the, mo the other most obvious game ball. I'm going to go Todd Gurley, man. We were, 
You talked about us struggling in the first half. Well, he didn't get to see the rock, man. We had the ball for eight minutes. Todd Gurley only had a couple carries. By that point, we didn't really work it to him through the air at all. Second half, he comes out. He ends up with 20 carries in the game, breaks the 100-yard mark, 108 yards. 23 was his long. And then through the air, three catches, 39 yards, and a touchdown. That touchdown actually came on basically a run. Uh, but, you know, Goff had the ball for about 0.2 seconds where he flipped it to Gurley. And, hey, in your fantasy world, it gets you an extra catch if you're in a PPR. But uh, big-time play there. We needed a touchdown. He had five targets to go along with it. He's just the guy we go to. Talking about winding that clock mm-hmm. out in the fourth quarter and, and Cooper Cup coming in with those big third-down conversions. But the reason why they were short third-down conversions is because Mr. Todd Gurley got big pickups on first and second down. So uh, I love what the he was The rest of this offense essentially relies on, on Todd Gurley's performance. Exactly. And, and we talked about uh, the play-action numbers for Goff coming off of it, 7 of 14 in the second half, 107 yards and a touchdown. So you're right. So much plays off of what he did. And he did what he needed to do. Got out there and got us some yards, moved the chains. I loved it. Todd Gurley, offensive game ball to you, my friend. Flipping the script, defensive game ball. I like the Brockers take. You know he's one of my favorites on the team. Captain now. So I think he stepped up into that role and was like, hey, if everyone Captain else Brockers. everyone else is around me, kind of is a little bit, you know, they need that that secret sauce that MJ has in in the locker room at halftime for uh <laughs> Space Jam. But Brockers, man, he had the whole bottle before he came out. He was jacked up, ready to go. Great pick there. I'm going to go into our secondary, and it's not going to be the two big names that just came in, even though Peters had the great interceptions at the end of the game. John Johnson the third, man. Nine tackles, mm. six solo. Had that big interception in the first half that I think was a really good momentum turn for us. We needed a defensive play, and you talked about how Cook was tearing us up. You just tweeted it out. We need someone to do something, right? And there's our man, John Johnson the third, stepping in. He almost had another interception in the game that was just a little bit out of his reach. But I love him back there in the secondary, uh, really as kind of that addition to Tlaib and Peters and helping them out uh, over the top. I think he's going to have a great season. He comes out and obviously makes the tackles, nine tackles, six solo. Uh, the guy can do it all. That is my defensive player of the game. Loved what he did for us. Excited. Only a second-year guy, man, what his ceiling is. Yeah, he was all over the place, dude. I really liked that pick. And he also had two passes deflected as well. You mentioned he almost had another interception there, too. Uh, so he's all over the ball, dude. He was all over car and ready to potentially get a second interception. So, yeah, I can't, uh, can't complain about your pick there. And now transitioning into the play-action ball, right? Here's your game ball. Nope, no, it's not. You didn't do so good. Try again. You came at the man, the myth, the legend, hashtag number 99, Mr. Chang Chang, Mr. Take It to the Bank. I'm coming at his partner in crime, Indomic and Sue, $14 million Ooh, man. Uh-oh. Uh, talking about not hearing those big names up front, right? Brockers had a great game on the line. And yes, there are things that Sue's doing that, you know, are creating. Uh, space for other guys. He's eating up blockers, things like that. Four total tackles, two solo. I just wanted to see him in the backfield a little bit more. I know we talked about how fast Carr was getting the ball out. Second half, not as fast, but I wanted to see just that nastiness, that what we saw in that brief little showing that we had in that Houston Texans game where he came around the corner and he was on the quarterback and shoved him in the ground. I guess no one was really on uh, Derek Carr, I think we ended up with only one sack, and that was Brockers, and that was late in the game. I want more. I want more from up front. You took the other big man. I figured I'd just be fair to the listeners. I'd take the other I big man. Hopefully they don't meet us in the street somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I would be like, yeah, no, that was that was James who said that. I, I, can I have your autograph? <laughs> Dumb and dumber point. Yeah, yeah. Him. If that's Seabass over there. <laughs> <laughs> but... Oh, man, we're losing it. It's like almost midnight, people. We're excited. We had to bring you some instant reaction. We waited for the game to be over. So happy to be 1-0. You're right, James, for winning 33-13. to That was stressful, man. I don't know if I could take a bunch of those. We're a second-half team, but I'd love to see us get out and whip some butt. We got the Arizona Cardinals next week, which I hope is kind of an alley-oop to an easy win here. Uh, but we'll find out in due time. We're going to talk about that later in the week. We've got an awesome week set up for you guys. Big thanks to James for coming on. Don't forget, keep an eye out for that Rams podcast coming later in the week. We're going to tear it up on that one as well. James, final thoughts, comments, anything you got to the people on your way out? 
One final thought, Bear. Did you hear the Monday Night Football announcers pronouncing Ibakum's last name? Because it felt, made me feel confused and a little, you know, a little questionable. Yeah, and maybe yeah. I'm wrong right now. I know. Well, but, you, uh, uh, you brought that up, and, and it's so funny you say that because the first like couple plays he made, and I was like, "Am I saying it wrong?" <laughs> and then I was like, "I no, don't know." Dude, Andrew who am I supposed Siciliano to check with? Yeah, who am I supposed and to check JB with? Long. Both say you come. Okay. Both those guys. Go with the local and I trust media. Them. Yeah. Yeah. That, the I, national guy was like, I was like, excuse me. Bless you. Excuse me? What? <laughs> bless you. I'm just afraid when someone starts saying Obo Okoronko and I thought I had it right. And then all of a sudden I'll be like, wait a minute. I'll just have to go back to Obizi. Uh, that's what I'm sticking to. Yeah. I can't pull that off. Oh, I love it, James. Dynamite drop in there to finish the show because you're right. I, my mind was blown earlier, too. Rams. Nation, we are 1-0, sitting pretty on top. So with that said, you know what it is. Until next time, peace.